Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and today we are doing our Let's Make Art Matter postcard for our, our How Does Your Garden Grow box. I don't have anything to show you, but it's going to be great because we are going to paint it together. Um, our recipient this month is Diana and she is a preschool teacher who is extremely passionate and loves her pre-K class and I just love this picture so much that we included. She's dressed up as Mother Goose and is reading Mother Goose to her class. So cute. <laughs> Isn't that so cute? Um, and I'm so excited that we get to send her something in the mail to just let her know that we're thinking about her and we appreciate her. I mean, some of my favorite memories in elementary school was, I have been like my teacher is just reading to the class. Do you remember when you're teaching? Oh, yeah. It was the best. And he would sit on the rug. Some of the only things I do remember about class. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, what we are going to paint for her this month, and I have not painted this yet, so I'll teach you how I go about um, approaching a new painting, is um, since our theme is how does your garden grow, I felt like she was she's growing minds as a teacher. She's growing a love for reading and a love for learning. So I thought we could do little garden illustrations along this postcard, um, and that way, you guys can adjust it to little illustrations that you want, but I just thought it would be a cute way to say like, thank you for growing the minds of our babies. Of our babies. Um, so I have a pencil <coughs> handy. I have my paints ready to go. Um, I have all my brushes. I'm not sure which ones I'm using yet because I haven't painted this. Um, but when I think of gardening, some things come to mind. I think of a watering can, I think of seeds, gloves, a gardening hat, maybe little plants and pots. So I'm basically just going to do all of those little illustrations on here. Now the fun thing about illustrations is they're basically simplified shapes. Um, so you don't have to be really excellent at drawing to be able to do this, okay? So let's start with um, a watering can, okay? So for my watering can, and we painted one of those earlier, I am going to, I kind of want to start over here, I think. So I'm just going to sketch two lines where the bottom slightly goes out and then it's curved along the bottom and it's curved along the top. And then I have a handle come up. I'm going to curve the other side so it kind of closes. And then we've got to do the spout. So it's just, again, two lines that are a little bit farther away and then get closer along the top. Here's my spout. And then you, you can like adjust from there. So that felt a little bit wonky in its shape. And this is why I like sketching. Cause you could just shift. And I think I'm gonna do that one more flat. There we go. That's good. And there's so many different shapes of watering cans that it's not um, like you can use one that you have and you're like, oh yeah, mine's shaped like this. Or you can use a totally different one. And I'm going to do water drops after that. Okay. And for gardening gloves, I'm going to do two. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by doing a thumb. And I'm actually going to first draw a mitten. Where the, clo where the fingers are all together. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is so then I know where to place the fingers. So now that I have an understanding of where my fingers are gonna go, I'm gonna do one, two, three, four. And then usually gardening gloves have like that little thing right there. I'm going to do the same thing going the opposite way. So I'm going to draw a mitten. And these don't have to be perfect. That's the beauty of doing a bunch of little ones too, is we're not focused so much on each individual piece as if it's supposed to be a single piece of artwork. Thumb, finger, finger. And then the bottom. And then you just kind of erase the lines in between. Okay. And I feel like, what if we did little strawberries right here? I want something in this corner. Wait, do you know how to paint strawberries? <laughs> Are you even familiar with strawberries? I'm familiar with strawberries. 
So let's do strawberry. That joke only works if you watched all the other tutorials for the month, everybody. <laughs> yeah, strawberries, strawberries, but you can do any other kind of fruit. And let's do, <laughs> oh, let's do a gardening hat. So I'm going to do a circle. Like it's over, like we're kind of looking on top of it. Circle, and then a slightly wavy line around it. Kind of looks like a fried egg. And then I'm just gonna add like a little bow. So then people are like, oh, it's a hat. It's a cute fried egg. Isn't that funny how just adding a little bow is like, oh yeah, okay, a hat, get it, <laughs> got it. Um, and whenever you have like spaces that you're not sure, you can always just do like little leaves. And this actually goes perfect with our theme. So like always utilize little leaves as a way to like fill in space. I'm gonna leave that for last though, because I gotta see how the other parts kinda line up. Okay, so I did gloves, watering can, hat. Uh, let's do a packet of seeds. So it's just gonna be a, tri a rectangle. <laughs> do I know my shapes? Put a bow on it. <laughs> rectangle with the bow, seeds. And then a little flap for the top. And then we could do little seeds kinda coming out. You can even write seeds, seeds. And let's do a pot. I'm gonna do a curved line for the top, have it angle in. And dirt, and then this one we will do. Habaneros. Little thing coming out of it. We can do a shovel, which is essentially a rounded triangle, like this, maybe a little thing in the middle, and a handle. And let's do one of those like rakes handle, and it basically is like a trident, right? It's beautiful. Okay, and I'm, I'm just like going for it. I'm not trying to be too precise with anything. And all of these things together, when you put like, like with like, people are like, oh, maybe on your own, like these things on their own, nobody would be like, what is that exactly? But once you see gloves, watering cans, seeds, plant, you're like, oh, that's a gardening shovel. Oh, okay. So like allow the elements to work with each other to where people are going to know what it is. Okay. Contextual clues. That's right. Contextual clues. Uh, let's see. What else can I do here? What's another gardening thing? I feel like I need one more thing right here. Michael, you garden. Bag of dirt. Hmm. No, not a bag of dirt. Can't do a bag of dirt. Um, um, tomato trellis. Nope, not gonna draw that. <laughs> 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 Thank you for your idea, no. Uh, what about a little bee? But I still feel like I need something bigger. AirPods. AirPods. Hey, you listen to music while you garden. Oh. Um, ooh, what about one of those hose wands? Hose wands? Watering hose. It's like a wand. Nope. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> These are the gardening things. <laughs> Bag of mulch. Uh, I should have just drawn these bigger. Back pain. Draw back pain. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um... What about an apron? Do you wear aprons when you garden? Heck yeah. Okay. So I've never drawn an apron before. Um, it's kind of goes down like this, right? Yeah. There's the top. Uh -huh. Neck loop. Yeah. Neck loop and... K kangaroo pocket in the front. Oh yeah, there you go. That. Cute. And then maybe those are the back loops? Yeah, there it is. Apron. Apron. You can tell that's an apron, right? Yeah. Are you messing with me? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm just, I was just thinking if it's bad enough, you could pretend it's a bag of mulch and no one <laughs> I'm wondering if I should actually put the ties in the front. Like this. Yeah, that's cute. Oh, we could do cute little vintage stripes on it. You're going to think I'm joking, but put a bow on it. People will get it. People will get it. There we go. There it is. <laughs> 
Okay, so now that I have all of my elements, and of course you can leave some out, you can add some, you can do whatever you want. Um, I'm gonna start filling in this space with green things. So like little leaves, like that. And maybe, they can be big, they can be small, like that. And I really like the idea of the bee, but I'm gonna do it tiny. And then maybe I'll have little dots kind of coming around it as if it's flying around. Let's do more leaves. And, blah, blah, blah. and I did strawberries here. I wonder, we'll see how that. If this is a Missouri based garden, it would not be a bee. It would be an Asian lady beetle because they are everywhere. They are everywhere. Okay, maybe. Okay, now let's just start adding paint to those and we'll just see how they turn out and we can always add more things, okay? So we're doing this together and I believe in us and it's gonna be okay. I'm going to start on the left-hand side and work my way over. So let's start with the strawberries. And because these are small paintings, I'm gonna use um, smaller brushes. So I have my round two. Put in our strawberries. I like to do things in pairs sometimes. Everyone needs a little friend. So I have them kind of as if one is behind the other. I'm just gonna drop in that color. Okay. And I'm not gonna add the green yet on the stems. Now let's do the watering can. I'm gonna to move to a six for this because it's a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna take my azure blue and some Payne's gray and mix that together to get kind of that, what's that color? It starts with a G, the... Gray. No. <laughs> no, the texture you get from the tin when it's weathered. Oh, okay, I, I know it. You know it. Give it three more seconds, you're gonna get it. Galvanized, yeah. yeah. Okay. So add water to it so it's a nice light color. And you can just go right over the pencil marks. I don't mind some pencil marks in my paintings. I never feel like it takes away from anything. So leave those if you want. And then let's do the handle and the spout. And remember, this is just a little illustration, so it doesn't have to be, um, if you wanna do like, sometimes just doing one swoop of an extra value, wherever you know there would be a little bit of shadow, is just all you need to give this the information. Okay, maybe a little line over here. There we go. Could you have um, done that wet wash technique, grab the, the paper towel and dabbed all of these things out? Or do you, are there too many things to dab out in this painting? Mm, you could have done that with some of them. So you wouldn't have to dab everything out because like this watering can, you could totally paint that gray color on top of the green. Wow. You would really just have to dab out, I would say strawberries. You can do the gloves a dark green color, so that'd be fine. The tools, the apron. The pot, well, yeah, it, I would probably just do like lesser elements, gotcha. but you can totally do that same method. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the hat and I'm going for kind of like a khaki color. So I'm gonna grab some honey brown and some Payne's gray and some of that mixture right here. That's leaning a little too green, so I'm gonna grab a swoop of red. There we go, now it's that pretty brown color. And I'm gonna paint the circle center head first, and then I'm gonna rinse my brush and use water just to spread it out. And then the same thing, let's add some more warmth to it actually, there we go. I just added a tiny bit more honey brown, and then we'll do the edge. And I'm not gonna paint the bow just yet because I want that to stay sharp, okay. For the seeds, I'm also gonna go for that kind of like brown color. So I'm gonna start here. And then I'm gonna go back in with a darker color 
to do the detail lines, but we want to make sure it's dry. So there's that. Cute. Yeah, let's do dark green for the gloves. What do you think about that? Love it. Okay, so let's grab honey, a little bit of red, some azure. This is so cute. I love that we did a similar card like this for our Hugo box and I just had the best time. And I just, when I was thinking about what to paint Diana, I'm like, this actually might be a fun little spring card to get. Okay, so. Your fingers might, my finger over here kind of blend it in a little bit, that's okay. Remember, people will use context clues to know what it is that you're painting. So if it didn't turn out perfect, we don't want perfection, you know? Okay, for the little tools, I'm gonna to use that same kind of gray color. And maybe we'll make the handles on those dark green to match the gloves. Just gonna do the shovel with that. And this part with that. We'll do a different color for the handles. Okay. For the pot, I wonder if we should do like a terracotta color. So let's do some honey and some red. Get that nice orangey color. I love terracotta. <laughs> and put in an edge and then kind of blend it out. Yeah, there we go. That's a good color. And if you want to do like a little extra lip on there, you can. And I'm gonna use my round two, and I'm going to use azure blue and some of this dark brown, mix that together, add some water to lighten the value. And I am going to do this apron, and I'm just gonna do stripes. Hmm. That color needs to calm down a little. Boop. And I'm not painting the pocket. I'm gonna go around the pocket. Just thin lines. Gotta do the strap here. Let's do the bow. What direction should I do? Should I still do stripes on the pocket? Yeah, do them horizontally. Okay. You. Okay, and let's do the handles on my little tools. I'm gonna do blue water coming out of my watering can. And now we're starting to do like the greenery around. I think I'll do, should I do this color blue on the edges of the gloves? So those things connect? Totally. Okay. And depending on how big your gloves are, you can do like cute little flower designs on them or something. Okay, let's take this brown 
and put in this little twig. You can also put in some dirt if you want, or the pot can be like angled in the way that you don't see it. So I'm gonna leave that up to you guys. I'm gonna take some of this green, I'm gonna mix, let's do some lemon yellow to get like a brighter green. And just little leaves. And now we can start doing our leaves here for the, with the stems. Still using my two, but you can use whatever brush you feel most comfortable using. Oh, I just thought a cute little gnome. That's what I should have done. That would have been super. <laughs> or just a pink flamingo. Oh my gosh, yeah, like a lawn flamingo. <laughs> okay. That is feeling pretty good. Let's add the stems on my strawberries. Okay. And let's do the seed line. So I'm just gonna take whatever dark value I can and I'm just gonna outline it. So we have the flap here. I'm just gonna do little seeds kind of coming out. And if you wanna write seeds on there, you totally can. I'm trying to think of what color I should do the bow. Let's do that blue color. Now just know that the blue is just not gonna be as vibrant um, because we painted the hat. So we're kind of layering on top and since watercolor is transparent, it's not going to be as vibrant. That's okay. Okay. Do a little, do I have a gardening shovel? I don't see one. I just can't, I can't remember if the dent is in the center. I think so because it folds. It is. Okay. I think it's there for strength, probably. When what? You, when you make that dent in the center of the shovel, it probably makes the curved portions a little stronger. Oh, okay. I based that off nothing. Thoughts and feelings? Yeah. Okay, and then I think I'm gonna do that little B. Hmm, I wonder... I wonder if I have enough room to make it obvious that it's a bee, or should I like make it a different color and have it be more like a butterfly? You see what I'm saying? Mm. I don't think it matters. I wonder if I could do a ladybug. I'm gonna test it right here before I commit to it. Yeah, make the wing portions just red and then like get a tiny little black dots. So I'm gonna let that dry because that will talk to the strawberries because the strawberries are poking out a lot because of how red they are, nothing out is red. So if I do a little ladybug like here and here and here, but I'm trying to think of like what a ladybug looks like. So they have the red body and I think they have a black head. Let's try this. And 
And then I think they have a little seam down the middle. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's it. Can you tell that's a ladybug? Absolutely, you can. Okay. Does it need to have legs? Yeah, there's six of them. But I feel like that makes it look like a spider. <clears throat> I'm going to leave off the legs. Uh, eight legs would make it look like a spider. So. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do a lighter red. If you did it, if you didn't erase that one, that is what they look like flying. Their little, like, hard shells come out and kind of look like that. Yeah. And let's do one here, maybe? Yeah. So I'm just doing a red circle. We'll let that dry and um, come back and do the black elements. And then I'm gonna look and I'm just gonna kind of see how everything else kind of plays together. If I can do more green in some places, you can also do like loose little leaves. Like this is an illustration. You can do whatever you want, you know? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be connected to the stem. Oh, that leaf got, went rogue on me. I really liked the turquoise dots that we did in the strawberry painting, so I'm going to add that. I think this apron is so darn cute. I can't even <laughs> handle it. You know what else would have been cute? is like a trellis. <laughs> I didn't want to paint that. Sorry that I... I mean, it's like five lines. It's like a, a miniature fence. You know what I mean? You could have done it. Okay. And let's, for good measure, we're just going to make sure that that's dry. Then I'm going to pick up some Payne's gray and we'll just do the little top of the head, seam down the middle. And then the dots. Cute. Cute. And I think they have antennas. Do they? Well, now I'm second guessing. Let me look. Kay. Probably. I mean, ladybug antennae. Yeah, they do. Let's just see what one looks like. I'm going to do it on the bottom corner one. That's cute. Let's add it. Love it. I feel like they need to be a little bit more red. Okay. The strawberry seeds need to be present, so let's put some seeds there. Okay. I'm wondering if I should like kind of age it a little bit, like do like a creamy edge. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm committing. Okay. So I'm taking a little bit of honey, I'm adding a little bit of panes to it to give it kind of like, I want it to feel like a tea stain color. And then just on the edges, I'm going to put that color in and then use water. And kind of like try and paint around what I already have. Some of the colors might bleed a little bit. And this is just, we don't want it to be like an outline. We kind of want it to fade. But I'm not filling in the whole thing, if that makes any sense. Yes. It's just kind of the edges. If you get a tiny bit of bleeding, it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Look at our cute little garden card. And so I know that sometimes when we are sending cards to people, 
um, whether we know them or don't know them, we sometimes just don't even know what to write. And so I thought that this could be a really, like it would just be cute that you just have to say thank you for helping grow, you know, all of that thing. You can tie in your painting to whatever message you want to write, or they can be separate. It, there's no, one is not better than the other. That's just some ideas for you. And if you're not familiar with our Let's Make Art Matter program, what it is that we try to do is we try and choose a recipient every month where we get to paint something and send it to them. So in your box, you will find a watercolor postcard that is pre-stamped and pre-addressed. And then we paint something for them together. And then that way they check their mail and they get art hugs from our community. And um, it's just a really simple and wonderful way to let someone know that we're thinking about them and we care about them. And I think that if we take time out of our day to do that, the world will just be a kinder place. Um, and if there's someone that you can think of that could use an art hug, you can nominate them on our website. Go to letsmakeart.com, scroll to the bottom. There should be a button that says nominate. Um, so you can do that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to say. Do I need to say anything else? Um, Sometimes people are nervous about sending watercolor cards in the mail. We do sell a product called Dorland's Wax Medium, which protects watercolor paintings from smudging and water. So if you want to like seal your postcards so they don't get smudged or water damaged in the mail, you can just do a layer of wax over it and let that dry and then it's safe from all of those things. So it's a great thing to use. <clears throat> I have a question. Yeah. Uh, this might not be applicable to people, but could you just spray a coat of polyurethane over that? Would it seal it? I don't know about, I'm not familiar enough with polyurethane to know if that... Because that's just something I have around all the time, just like clear poly, just for... I like, honestly don't know. We're going to try it at home. Okay, all you right. tell me how it goes. All right. And they do have spray sealants too. I like, I don't like sprays. <laughs> I don't know why. I just don't... That's why I like the wax because I just apply it myself with sprays. I feel like I get spray stuff everywhere. It's just not my favorite that thing. That wax is magical. We have a watercolor painting by our kitchen sink that's been there for years and mm -hmm. it gets steam and mm -hmm. and it looks as good as the day we did it. That wax yeah. is amazing. It's really great stuff. So if you want to do that, you totally can. Um, I hope you had fun playing with this and drawing and trying something new. Um, and please take time out of your day to do this for someone else. It's a nice thing to do. Totally. All right. Thank you, guys. All See right. you later. Bye. Bye.